Hey friends, today on Gardening with Creekside, we are going to uh, get our hands really for the first time on the new Aquapots light from Proven Winners. So, this has been much anticipated out in the uh, Proven Winners world and the uh, introduction of these new light containers. If you have followed us for any length of time here at Gardening with Creekside, you know that we are huge, huge fans of the original Aquapot line from Proven Winners, which is a collaboration of Proven Winners, um, Jack Barnwell, who kind of came up with the inner workings of the Aquapots, and then Michael Carr, who is the artist who designs all of that beautiful ceramic glaze pottery. Proven Winners now has come out with a light line. This is light in both weight and I guess the price tag. They're trying to make it maybe a little bit more affordable um, for the gardeners. So my goal today is to walk you through the two different, we got Brenner Winter sent us two different ones, two different shapes. And so we're going to walk you through and I'm just going to simply tell you the pluses and minuses that I just see right off the bat as both a home gardener and then as a grower. Uh, I'm going to be very objective and I'm just going to kind of tell you how it is. I'm not going to say yay or nay. The plants will tell us our, themselves once we get um, into the growing in about a month from now. Then, of course, we'll come back and kind of give you an update on how everything is doing. So, if you have been interested in the aquapot lights, then hopefully this will be very helpful um, for you and to try to determine if this is a great product or a good fit for your garden. So, what we have here are two different shapes of the aquapot's light. The two aquapots that aquapot lights that Proven Winners sent us is from the Aquapot Light Urban. I'm trying to make sure I get all this right in my brain. The Urban um, series. So we have Courtyard, which is the square, right? So that is the plus right away that you can see because it's lighter. I can actually pick it up. So you've got that one, the Courtyard. And then you have Metro, and Metro is um, just a nice vase shape on that. So what makes the lights different than the traditional aqua pots is that um, you will notice, first and foremost, if you're familiar with aqua pots, so there is a drain hole in the bottom. So you have a drain hole, um, but Proven Winners, when you order the aqua pot lights, they will send you a plug with your order and so the neat thing about this plug is that you use the plug from the outside because they know um, that some people might want to bring these indoors in the winter and you don't want to have to repot it and worry about putting a plug from the inside so in your little bag you have got a plug that you can put down here in the bottom so that way it does not drain water say in your house or your sunroom so each aquapot light will come with one of those. Um, there's also not a lip on the inside of the aquapot light. Traditional aquapots will have a lip right here where the, um, the inner workings will rest upon. So there's not that, there's just a smooth on the inside. It is physically very light, right? So you can easily pick these up and move these around. Um, all right, so. The inserts, which makes it the self-watering container, um, we have one here. So you can buy the pot, and which comes with the inner working, so you can buy it like that. Or if you're going to do what I'm going to do, because we're also going to test it out, and if I have an existing pot, how this insert will work into that. Proven Winners also, when you order, will send you two packs of the continuous release fertilizer. So that is very helpful. So, we're going to try to make sure we get the, uh, a good shot here of this. So this is the insert that goes in. It is a, um, a, a plastic material, nice and sturdy. It's not, it's not flimsy at all. Um, so you have your water reservoir. I believe this is a two gallon, um, it is here, it tells me exactly. Yet 2.9 gallons, so almost three gallons worth of water that it will hold. You will notice that it is both smooth and it has some ridges on it. So uh, after a little investigating and some thinking, those ridges are for when you put the top on, 
when the reservoir is full, then that's where the water flows out. So it will come out because there's a little lip right here and it will come out and it will trail out. Then it will empty out from the bottom of your pot. That's why the Aquapot lights do have holes in the bottom because they will drain out the bottom. So that is that. Then you have the soil tube, which is very similar to um, the other soil tube on the traditional aquapots, other than these are not slits. These are little cubes and the bottom is solid, but it does have four holes on it. You do get a also the um, telescoping um, fill tube right here. So depending on how tall your pot is, if you have a very short pot, then it can be short or if you have a taller pot you can cinch it up and it will be taller um, so that's kind of the design on it just a couple of drawbacks that i have just seen kind of maybe we call them negatives just things that you need to be aware of you might notice that i'm kind of you know wrestling with this because it doesn't sit down in there and stay nice and tight so that concerns me a little bit when i'm putting my soil in is this going to shift and then i get soil in my water reservoir time will tell i don't know but i just know sitting here that that's kind of an issue thinking about when you are choosing if you have if you buy the aquapot light then you don't have to worry about this but if you're going to be like me and try to retrofit one of your existing pots then you, there's a couple of things that you need to think about one the size of your current pot here we have um, a beautiful ceramic pot that is here this is let's see if i can the measurements are on here um this is a 19 inch so 19 inches and this fits really nicely down in there so it fits i can easily put the insert in and i have plenty of room here for um, the tube the fill tube the water tube to stick out if i had a tall vase right if i had a really nice tall container this is not going to work because your telescoping arm here where you put water in is going to be below the soil line. So you can't use this just as it is in a taller pot. So that's something that you need to think about is to make sure that you know this measurement and then the actual height of your pot and that this is well above your pot line. So that is something to think about. And then of course the diameter. So you have to know the diameter of the water reservoir and make sure that your pot is um, wide enough that this will fit down into. One more thing, just to make sure that your pot will accommodate this water reservoir is how much height are you gonna have with your container so you know that your telescoping arm the water fill tube is going to be tall enough but let's say your pot only comes up to here that means you only have you know what is that eight inches at most of soil in there so you need to make sure that you've got plenty of soil that can go in there in your container again something to think about on that now, so that is the round. Well, let's say you have a square pot like this guy. So what they have done is you still have, the water reservoir is still your round one. So we have, we have that. So that is going to see if we can sit that right there. And then what they do is they have a adapter shall we say um, a square adapter and this is really nice strong and sturdy this is not going to warp at all for this courtyard it fits perfectly down in there so it's a nice tight snug fit all the way around and the pot touches that so what happens is is then this guy just goes and sits like that right so then you have soil all around here um, okay, so one concern though that I have is that as a grower, um, so imagine that this is the pot right here, right? So you have your pot. All this right here underneath this is going to be air. So as a grower, I'm thinking if it were a traditional aqua pot, this would all be water. So I would have more water available for my plants, which means I don't have to fill it up as often. So I don't have this is airspace in here so and then another thing is and or that could be soil 
so I don't have any soil for my roots to grow. So this is kind of, quote, dead space in the container. Something to think about, you know, pluses or minuses of this. Um, I don't, I personally don't have any more square pots, so I can't tell you how this will fit into other containers other than you're just going to, I don't know. I, I can't really speak to that as far as like trying to retrofit this into a traditional square pot because I don't have a traditional square pot. So I am just working with the aqua pot light. And so what we're going to do is we are going to plant up the um, courtyard one, which is the square one. We're going to pot that up, plant it up. I'm going to show you exactly how I do it. And then we are going to plant the traditional pot with the insert. We're going to do that with shade perennials. So this one will be sun annuals, and then we're going to do shade perennials. And then that one will stay out for me. I'm going to leave it out all year. So I'm going to leave it out all winter, you know, come back next spring, then we'll really know how well everything is doing. If you are coming to the nursery, then we will have the um, other aquapot light down at the nursery. So that way you can put your hands on it. We'll have the insert there so you can kind of play with it yourself and you can see um, if you like it or if not. There are obviously different colors and different styles that the aquapot lights come in. And so you can check out the Proven Winners website for that. And I believe they're already selling them online. So you can check out them. And if this is something that you want to um, add to your garden, then you can certainly go and do that. So what we're gonna do is get everything ready here and we're gonna pot up the courtyard with some really pretty sun annuals. All right, my friends, so here we got aquapot light. Like I said, they send you two little packs of the continuous release fertilizer, and there are some great instructions that are on the wrapping for the insert. Obviously, I had to take them off because I'm ready to pot it up. So what they recommend is to open up one pack, and this one pack is going to go into your water reservoir. Um, they said just do it down the water tube, but I'm like, well, I'm, you know, I have access so I'm just gonna dump it in there uh, so you've got that in there this is a way that it will and you can do this also with your traditional aqua pots is that you can put the continuous release fertilizer in there um, in your water reservoir now keep in mind again just like with your traditional aqua pots when I say traditional I mean the first go round, right the glazed ceramic ones um, that you want to position your water tube in your pot where it makes sense to fill it up so we did come down just a little bit because uh, it'll help hide the chicken water right here so i am going to actually kind of turn it and so my my tube my fill tube is going to be on this back corner um, so that way the grass will kind of hide it and it will be there we go off to the side right here and then right we're going to pot it up like we always would a um an aqua pot. Use your really nice high quality potting soil. Of course, I am a huge fan of the Proven Winners potting soil. That's no, that's nothing new. We use it all the time. So I'm going to borrow Jerry's uh, knife and uh, so I can slice this baby open. Uh, he always carries a, as Jackson says, it's not actually a knife because it has, it's a blade. So we're going to use that. I think he needs to get a new blade on here. This is a little dull. It didn't slice it quite nicely. So I'm going to toss it to him. Ha! Perfect. All right. So then we're just going to fill it up. But do not fill it up all the way. So you're going to come in here and push it down. And so that that water, that fill tube right there, right? So you can see the fill tube. You want to make sure that that soil is nice and packed down in there really, really well. Once you know that that's pack, packed in nicely, then we can come in and fill up the rest of the container with the potting soil. Now, keep in mind, I do have three plants that are in the grande, and then I have one that is going to be in the um, a gallon size. So don't fill it up all the way yet. Um, until we know that we've got the girls. I don't know if you can see them. And I'm sure you can probably hear them. They are quite interested into what I am doing. They like this a lot. All right. Now, like I said, Proven Winners gave you two packs. 
even though you, if you use the Proven Winners Potting Soil, it does have some of the continuous release fertilizer in there. Um, you are not gonna hurt anything by adding in that second pack. This is a slow release, continuous release fertilizer. So, and these are all gonna be heavy feeders that we are putting in here. So it is not gonna hurt them whatsoever. We are using a beautiful Skyrocket grass. This is the Graceful Grasses Skyrocket. I use this one because it's the exact same one that I have planted on the front of the chicken coop. Therefore, all of this will tie in quite nicely. If you have your roots that are really nice and uh, well established, shall we say, just come in there with your fingers. Obviously, I don't have my garden belt on. If I did, I would have my hori hori and I would just take out any aggressions and whack it but you can certainly do that with your fingers that's really all you need to do right just zhuzh them up a little bit and i'm going to plant this in the center in the back and by putting that beautiful grass in there it really does hide the fill tube so that's always good to help disguise that a little bit and then of course as the grass grows it will hide it even more. I might actually raise that up a little bit like that and then because we can still add more soil in here which is what we're going to do. For me I'm never a, a, a perfect judge on the exact amount of soil. For me it's better to have not quite enough because it's easier in my opinion to add the soil than it's to take the soil away but I digress. So there we go in there now what else we're going to use in here is a really fun this is the mystic illusion this is a dahlia it is a beautiful black um, foliage on it and then it'll do just really pretty creamy like true yellow flowers and the height on this is 18 to 36 inches so it is going to be a bit taller so we're going to kind of offset that and i think because of the way i know my son my son comes up here sets over this way gets more sun on this side so we're going to put it over here Ooh. now i know that it is august and this may be like jenny why in the world are you planting annuals in august well we are in north carolina a zone 7b we have a very long growing season um and so this will take me gosh through october november probably all right so there we go on that next we're going to use a really fun little begonia so this is the illumination apricot um, begonia it is a nice kind of an orangey color so that's really fun let me show you the picture on that i know y'all enjoy a good tag and a picture so with the yellow and the orange it's a little nod to uh you know fall because hopefully fall will be here somewhat soon i said that in one of the videos and people were like no don't say that it's too early and i'm like eh, not for us <laughs> not if you've been sweating your honey off like we have oh my word now i understand for my folks who have um short growing seasons that and you have very long winters you're probably not ready for it at all but here in the south we're like oh yeah color temperatures sound really good and then last but not least we're going to do the fantastic super Junior vista bubblegum and so this is going to give me massive color loads of color uh, it is definitely going to be my spiller and filler all in there together so we got that so what i'm going to do is just top off this with some more soil so that everybody is nice and covered and then when it's time to fill up the water i will bring that you back so you can see me do that Okay, so I went ahead and topped off, and so there is soil um, all around all of the great roots. Jerry and I were talking. I was pleasantly surprised that this courtyard held more soil, or as much soil as it did. Like, I, I didn't think it was gonna hold as much soil. So it took an entire Proven Winners bag, and honestly, um, I still could use more. So if I wanted to really fill it up to the tippy tippy top, I would need to open up a second bag that's something for you to keep in mind for this courtyard 
container. Um, if you're going to use, say, grandes, you're definitely going to need a second bag because I put in a gallon, right? So if you're using grandes or quarts, you're going to probably, I would go ahead and buy two bags. That way you have plenty of soil because on some places I have maybe two inches of a lip showing. So side little note. Now, next, what you're going to do is before you fill up your water tube, is you're going to come in and you're going to water from the top. We, this is the same method that you would do with a um, the original aqua pot, because you have all of that a whole bag's worth right of potting soil in there that needs to be um, wet down. It needs to go ahead and have moisture on it so that the plants go ahead and have plenty of water for them to um, be absorbing. So we're going to come in here and just water it really nicely about how much I think it needs for that soil to get nice and damp in there. Um, one concern that I have with these lights is that as I begin to fill up my water tube, I am not going to know when it starts draining from the bottom, right? Because on a traditional, the original aqua pot, there is a hole halfway up the pot. So you know exactly when you have filled it all the way up because it's water shoots out the back. Um, so with it being on the ground, I can't see the water coming out of the bottom. Not that I'm concerned I'm overfilling it. It's just, you know, should I stop earlier? So that's something like that. So all that's wet down. I'm gonna change out my, uh, setting here and then I'm going to come in here and fill up use the water fill tube and we're going to fill that up um, with water there. All right so it is watered in it's really hard to tell that we got three gallons of water in there, but there you go. I'll let you take that piece of information with how you will. So this one is all nice and done. So now what we're going to do is we're going to move over to the shade and we're going to plant a traditional pot, right? My own ceramic glaze pot with the insert, but this time we're going to do it with shade perennials. Okay, my friends, so we have just stepped, I don't know, 30 feet away from where we were just planting right here on the edge of the woods. Now, do not make too many judgments. Remember, we're still in construction zone. Um, we, we were blessed yesterday with an incredible day of solid rain. So it is a muddy mess around here. I don't know if you can see back behind me, uh, our lovely red clay is um, very, very sticky right now. Um, we were gonna do construction. I digress. This area, under construction. It is going to be a beautiful shade garden that we're going to plant with shrubs and perennials extending down into the woods. Probably this pot will get moved around in its final placement once that construction happens. For now though, I have it right here close to our cute little seating area and there you go. So what we're going to do is we are going to plant um, this, what you would just consider like truly a traditional pot that we have already, right? So this is one that's in, in our inventory that is, you know, as a home gardener, this is what I have. So again, we're just using that round insert, take my bag of the continuous release fertilizer, throw it in there, easy peasy. Now, um, I want you to see, Jerry's going to come over here and show you how this fits within the, um, within the pot. So again, thinking about where do you want your tube to be. Um, so, okay, got that in there. And then I am going to grab my soil so you can see that I have extra room on the perimeter of the water reservoir. So... We're gonna do this first, and I'm, I know I'm putting in a good bit because I want to try to get this soil packed around the edge of the container here. So it didn't, it didn't move too terribly bad. Um, remember, go in, push that down really good. Make sure you come in around on your edges if you have extra room like I do, and push that down. Your roots will still go here. Um, and so you need to have good coverage with your soil 
so that those roots have plenty of room to go and don't hit air pockets. Okay. So I have four gallon size perennials that I'm gonna be planting. I may need a second bag, I may not. We will see, I think it's gonna be, we're just gonna go ahead and dump the whole thing in. We're gonna go for it. We're going for it, people. All right, got that. That's good to go. Yes, these are perennials. If you wanted to add some biotone, you certainly could throw some biotone down in here. Um, I forgot to grab it, so we're not gonna worry about it. That's the great thing about these perennials. They are, they are pretty tough. So lots of good soil coverage in here. So what I'm gonna be using is a mixture of, I have two perennials that are going to be evergreens. So I have the Brilliance Autumn Fern. This is going to be an evergreen for me and we love these ferns because they can handle um, a bit of sun, uh, but they are definitely considered shade plants. So remember, a shade plant is rated as four hours or less of sun. Uh, you see, I, I found my hori hori. And so I am breaking up the soil here. Now, because I wanna hide my tube, I'm gonna go ahead and put this guy off to the side right here. Yes, but the Brilliance Autumn Fern is called Brilliance because the new growth is a beautiful, kind of a rusty, burgundy, reddish color. And so it is very brilliant, hence the name. So now you, the water tube has completely disappeared. Next, we have um, my other evergreen is going to be the, um, this is a Eucara from Proving Winners. This is Evening Gown. Evening Gown is a beautiful, nice, dark foliage. It will be an evergreen. Now, is it, are either one of these gonna look like Primo in January? No, they're not. But you will see, be able to see that we do have plants here during that time. So, let's see. Let me look at my size because my euchara is going to be relatively short about and that includes the flower it's about 12 to 14 inches then i have guacamole hosta which is going to be about 22. i should have done this before i <laughs> started planting to know exactly where it is but you know that's life so i have ghost fern, no godzilla so godzilla is a painted fern it is a cross between a japanese painted fern and a lady fern it can get rather large. It can get, hence the name Godzilla, it can be up to three feet tall. So guess where I'm gonna put it? <laughs> In the back. That's right. So here we go. Break it up. And it too is gonna go in the back. Now I know that Godzilla and the fern have somewhat similar structure and habit to them but they have they are different and they do have different color um, so that's just a design choice on my part as far as putting those in and then of course once they actually start growing they will look different i'm going to go ahead and put evening gown here in front of the fern because I want my two evergreens to be kind of across from each other, not right beside each other. And I might actually have to take some of this soil out. If you need to, when you've got these big plants, feel free to like squeeze your root ball. You're not hurting anything. So find your best, your best vantage point. You can manhandle them. Don't be afraid, perennials are tough. Plants are a lot tougher than I think we give them credit for. All right, now, last but not least, guacamole. And I love guacamole because it is a beautiful pasta that has beautiful color, um, nice kind of a bright center. 
darker edging on it and I am taking some soil out right now but I'm going to reserve that to top dress if I need to. So this is going to start out being a pretty full container. The great thing about putting perennials in containers, I love it. So you don't have to fill you know, um, your container up. She's in there. You don't have to fill it up as nearly as much as I am. Um, but you're gonna um, just be a little bit more patient with it as it grows. So you can see, I think, how the roots are really developed here. And we're just gonna come in here and whack it. Now, if you don't have a Hori Hori one, I think you should get one because they are amazing. You can use it for anything and everything, but if not, just use your hand like I was doing earlier. And I think I want that side out. Boom, there we go. Yes, but I love putting perennials in containers because if you put less in here, like you could just put the hosta in here and just do that and it would be glorious. And you could leave that in here for years and years. Um, so that is the great thing about putting perennials in containers. Quote, the downside of that would be that in the winter time, it would look like the pot's empty because of course your hosta is going to go dormant and you're not gonna have any foliage. That's why I like to pair it with some um, evergreen shade perennials as well. But they're gonna all intermingle together just like they've already started to do right there. Godzilla is gonna take off. Don't worry about Godzilla. It's gonna pop up and be just fine. So I am gonna leave this container planted all winter long. So this is gonna be a little bit more of a delayed uh, report that I can give you because I will just have to see how it comes back, say like next spring, next summer. I, even if this is filled with water because of rain, I won't water it, but if the rain may, even let's say that does freeze, We'll see how that affects the plants. I don't know. Most of these plants, if not all of these plants, are very cold tolerant. I am a zone 7B. Um, like hostas tend to go like to zones three, I believe. Um, yeah, so zone three. So even if that water reservoir had water in it and it froze, it would have to be really, really cold for it to be able to freeze. Um, it should, they should be fine. But this is, gardening is a science experiment, one giant experiment, and that's what we're doing. And we're just going to, uh, we're gonna see, we're gonna see how they do. So I've got my hose, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna water it in from the top and then fill up my water tubes. Today's project is complete. We have got two containers planted up either using the full Aquapot light uh, container system and then of course using that traditional pot that I already have and using the insert to turn it into a self-watering container. Just to give you a little bit of a different maybe a little different real-time perspective of how everything looks in here um, and to kind of give you an update on the uh, gardens anyway here at the chicken coop. So here we are, obviously, right? It is in the back. We stuck that aquapot light that is the courtyard, of course, right there. Um, the girls are are very happy. They're, they're loving their new home. But here we have it, um, and it fills in that area quite nicely. I really like how it fills that panel space it looks very nice i will keep you updated on how everybody does but skyrocket grass such a fantastic grass we've got the skyrocket there you've got the mystic illusion that dark one the begonia and then of course our sweet little bubblegum right there on the side and then just to kind of pan ever so slightly to give you a perspective of where the shade container is these are plants that are hanging out that are going to go in the gardens up here once we get them the gardens established and beds made and all that other good stuff so everybody's up here notice that i've put um, some saucers under ones that tend to be um, maybe a little bit more thirsty i would like to get saucers on all of them but it helps when we have those really high temperatures and um, yeah they have responded really well this is the new, a new lilac it's called per pink in the fact of sometimes it looks purple and sometimes it looks pink and for me in North Carolina, these have not stopped blooming. So they're not completely full, but hey, I will take it. But over here, you can see we got the sweet little seating area, and that is where we put the shade container um, right here. I can almost guarantee that it is going to get moved because it will, um, as we 
fill in these gardens, it will go into a different spot. But yeah, I mean, everything in the container just looks really, really nice. Very happy with the, the hosta, the euchre, the fern, and then of course, um, yeah, two ferns, right? Yeah, so the autumn and then the Godzilla. So there we go, got two ferns. But just to kind of give you an idea where that pile of debris is, there's a gully right there. So the gardens will kind of go up to that mound of the red dirt. Obviously, we've got to get in here. We've got some wild grapevine, um, some little limbs that need to be taken out. But all of this under here will be um, a lovely woodland shade garden. If you go in deep, of course, it becomes really dark. Um, and then as you come out further, we do get more sun. But just kind of give you an idea on how everybody is doing with that rain that uh, we always get asked about what this is. That is a crepe myrtle. I don't know the um, exact cultivar name because um, it was actually an accident. We were supposed to be getting the white Natchezes and the next year when they bloomed, this one turned out to be pink. So <laughs> there you go on that. But to give you an update, here we have um, these gardens in front of the chicken coop. You saw Christine and I plant these together. Could not be happier with how everything has turned out. I mean, just gorgeous. So just as a little recap on the plants, we have the Bewitched Green with Envy Sweet Potato Vine. It is um, nice and vigorous, kind of taken over my Lemon Zest Lantana here on this corner rocking deep purple salvia then you can see right more that skyrocket grass that we planted in the aquapot light then we've got those going down through there Senorita Rosalita Cleome uh, is doing just lovely as the girls come out of their uh, coop uh, somebody's getting ready to maybe take a flight somebody had asked earlier they're like I did not know that chickens could climb ladders well you know I didn't either but they can so sometimes they'll walk down halfway and then fly and then kind of the same thing as when they go up. I just find it fascinating that chickens can climb a ladder. I mean, there you go. Sweet little girl right here is just demonstrating, just being the perfect model and showing us how she can climb down a ladder. Of course, there she goes. All right. Yes, sweet girl. All right. I digress and then the other different plant that we have in here, of course, is the Wicked Witch uh, Coleus. This is the Color Blaze series, can do sun or shade. But I mean, the Lantana, look at that. We've got pollinators, we've got butterflies, we've got honeybees, we've got all sorts of great things going on in here. And it just looks really, really nice. The be Bewitched Green with Envy did kind of swallow up again my lantana, but that's all right. It is all good. Um, it's fine. Everybody's being happy and cooperative, and so I will absolutely take it. All right, my friends, that is today's project is complete. I am going to sign off. I will absolutely keep you updated on these aquapot lights. I will give you a completely unbiased opinion on them, um, their successes, their pros, their cons, how they do the whole shebang. All right, my friends, as always, thanks so much for gardening with Creekside. Y'all have a fantastic day. We'll see you in the next video. Bye, friends.